Welcome to the All Out Leadership Podcast, hosted by Pastor Eric Lawson, where each episode is uniquely designed to help you live all out by bringing you practical leadership from a biblical perspective delivered in 10 minutes or less. So whether you're a business leader, serving in ministry, or simply looking to grow in your leadership, this podcast is for you. Before we dive into this week's topic, make sure to subscribe to the podcast and download the show notes at ericlawson.com forward slash podcast. And while you're at it, feel free to share the content on social media. Now, let's join Pastor Eric for this week's conversation. We're looking at some leadership teachings from Jesus on what it means to be great. Last week, we looked at the first definition of greatness is leaders carry crosses before they carry crowns. Leaders aren't in search of the crown, the glory that comes with it. They're really picking up the cross to die to themselves. We looked at the Air Force's PJ motto. We do these things so that others might live. Now we're going to talk about this cross just a, a little bit further because there's some important perspectives when it means to uh, pick up and carry our cross. So I just want to read uh, this from Mark chapter 9. We read this last week, but want to review something. Then they departed from there and they passed through Galilee. And for he taught his disciples and said to them, the son of man's going to be betrayed into the hands of men and they'll kill him. After they kill him, he will rise the third day. But they did not understand this saying. When it comes to leaders carrying crosses, you might be listening to this and you have a leader, and that leader is carrying a cross. Jesus made some statements, and the Bible is very clear. They didn't understand this saying. So when it comes to crosses that every leader carries, know this. We never fully understand the weight of somebody else's cross. Every disciple is called to pick up their cross, Jesus said, follow me. Every disciple is a cross carrier. We're all laying down our life somewhere. <clears throat> At least we should be. Now, we don't understand one another's crosses. And the human temptation that we all have is to criticize one another's cross. Or better yet, we sit around and compare our cross with other people's cross and why their cross is not as heavy as our cross. And, you know, why we have it so hard. And, you know, we're just, you know, and I don't know. And we give, have self-pity over our crosses. You know, it's interesting when you look at Jesus. Never one time do you ever see Jesus feeling sorry for himself. We don't even see him feeling sorry for himself at the cross. In fact, he's carrying his cross. The weight of the cross brings him to his knees. And there's a group of women weeping over Jesus. And we don't see him going, you know, I just appreciate this. Thank you for your sympathy. You know, maybe you can go post some comments on my, my Facebook feed and just maybe share this experience with everybody about my pain and my suffering and maybe start a prayer chain. You know what Jesus says? He goes, hey, don't weep for me. Weep for yourselves. I mean, never one time do we actually see Jesus weep for himself. Have you thought about that? We never see Jesus weep for himself. We see Jesus weep for others. It's the only time you see Jesus, the greatest leader of all time, weep. He wept at the tomb of Lazarus. He wasn't weeping for himself. He was weeping over his friends. He was weeping over the unbelief of the crowd. Uh, he wept over Jerusalem, but we never see Jesus weeping over his cross and weeping over himself. All right, I digress, but let's get back to the point. We don't understand the weight of the cross that Jesus carried. We don't understand the weight that your pastor's carrying. We don't understand the weight that your boss is carrying. So it's very important that we just stop to go, I don't fully understand what it is they carry. Because if we don't keep that in perspective, the temptation is we're going to begin to criticize uh, our boss. We're going to compare our boss. We'll be critical of our bosses cross if we just aren't careful. Isaiah chapter 9 verse 6 says, For unto us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulders, and he'll be called Wonderful, and he'll be count, called Counselor. I, I meet young leaders all the time, and they're looking for government, which is leadership. Give me a position of leadership. Give me authority. Give me an opportunity. Well, government rested upon the shoulders, which means there was weight that leaders carry. Look, if you don't want to carry weight and you don't want to carry responsibility, you don't want leadership position because that's really all it is. But before Jesus carried government, what was the weight that he carried upon his shoulders? He carried a cross. Those that are worthy to lead government are those that are worthy 
first to carry crosses and be willing to die to themselves than they want. Look, the person who wants government for the sake of power is very dangerous. We can look all over history and we can see the consequences of that. Those who are willing to carry a cross to die to the, themselves so that others might live, they're the ones you want in government positions, whether it's a CEO seat or a political seat. Those are people we want leading because they're not leading for themselves. They're leading for the benefits of others. So I want to just talk about what it means to be great when it comes to your leader's cross, because not every cross that we carry is necessarily our own cross. It might be that we're called to help lift the cross of our leaders. I want to take us to a story, a case in point in Mark chapter 15. Jesus is carrying his cross and the weight of that cross and the weight of the suffering that he is endured, which we have no comprehension. We will never fully understand this side of eternity, what it was that he bore for us and because of us, uh, which is also what many leaders endure. We carry many crosses for the people, and I'll be honest, because of the people, I've been crucified more than once. Now, we come to Mark 15, verse 21. Then they compelled a certain man, this is the Roman centurions, a man standing on the side of the road, he's coming there for Passover, a man, Simon of Cyrene, the father of Alexander and Rufus, and he was coming out of the country and passing by, and they compelled him to carry the cross. And so what we see is even Jesus had somebody help him carry his cross. Great people aren't people who point at somebody else's cross, gossip about somebody else's cross, point out all the splinters in somebody else's cross, but a great person is someone who's willing to bend down, stoop down, and say, how can I help you carry this cross? How can I help lift the weight and the burden that you are facing? So I want to talk about a couple benefits that actually come when we stop to help other people and help lift them carry their cross. The first thing that we see is that there is a fellowship that happens when you're willing to help carry somebody else's cross. So uh, Paul, Paul said this in Philippians 3.10. He goes, that I might know him, speaking of Christ, the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings. Man, we want to know God's power. We want to know his, his presence. But very few people go, Lord, I just want to know you through fellowship of your sufferings. When you're picking up a cross and dying to yourself, or when somebody is unfairly crucifying you and you didn't deserve it, but you as Christ hang from that crucified position, and rather than lash out and defend yourself or retaliate, you go, Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. And when we act like Christ in those moments, here's what really is happening. We're experiencing the fellowship of Christ's sufferings. He's given us an opportunity to know him him in a deeper level. The deepest relationships are the foxhole relationships. You hear about that. Uh, soldiers in arms who are in the trenches together, uh, enduring bombs and sleepless nights and hunger and all the, the battles and all the atrocities that go with it. There's a bonding that happens that they didn't get just out playing volleyball or they didn't just get sitting in the classroom reading books on combat. There's a, there's a foxhole experience, and those deepest relationships, lifelong relationships, happen. Why? Because there's a fellowship that happens when you suffer with other people. Uh, over the years, I've had people go, you know, hey, pastor, I want to be your friend. And, you know, and, and I appreciate that, but many people want to become friends with people that they perceive are in a position of influence because, honestly, a lot of times they can get something from it. You know, they, well, I feel better about myself because— you know, I can drop so-and-so's name or, you know, sometimes people just want to use other people's influence to get things from themselves. And, and again, there's a lot of people who have pure motives. But here's what I found. The people that I actually tend to fellowship with the deepest or actually build the most meaningful relationships with aren't people who, you know, go, mm -hmm, I want to be your friend and, ooh, you're great. It's people who are willing to stop and recognize when I, as a leader, am carrying a cross or I'm going through a difficult time and go, hey, how can I help lift that? How can I be praying for you? What can I do for you to stand alongside of you? The deepest relationships I have with people that are lifelong relationships or relationships for years uh, aren't, aren't just people that I played games with. They're the people who stood with me and helped lift the weight of crosses that at times I've had to carry. You want to become uh, closer to your leader? You want to become closer to your boss? Just go, hey, boss, what, what cross are you carrying right now? And how can I help lift the load? 
Because the reality is there are some staff at times, not here at Element Church, any of my staff listening, you're awesome, you're amazing, you're great. All right, I'm talking to somebody else's staff right now. But 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 there are some staff, they are the cross. They are the weight that we have to carry. And again, nobody here at Element Church, none of our volunteers, none of our staff. I'm just, you know, prophesying for some other churches out there that need to hear that message. All right. So, but again, if you want to become somebody's friend, just go, hey, I see you got some challenges. You got some weights. What can I do to be a friend? What can I do to lift that? How can I be praying for you? And you'll find that there's going to be a lot of great relationships that evolve out of that. And also, one other important thing is um, there's a reproduction that happens, a healthy, godly legacy that happens when we're willing to pick up other people's crosses. What happened with Simon and Cyrene, the Bible points out this statement, the father of Alexander and Rufus. Why did the Bible, Mark, the author of this, put those two people in there? Because the readers in the early church knew that these guys became church uh, influencers. In fact, Paul mentions Rufus in Romans chapter 16, verse 13, as chosen in the Lord. So I find this interesting. Here's a man who's going to Passover, who didn't know the Messiah was Jesus, but when he stopped to carry Jesus' cross, somewhere in that process, he got converted became a Christ follower, and his kids became Christ followers, and they became pillars in the early New Testament church. When you're willing to carry other people's cross, that spirit's contagious, but that's also the spirit you want to reproduce, and that's when other people truly see Jesus inside of our life. All right, next week we're going to pick up with this. We're going to look at a couple more important things that Jesus defines as greatness. Thank you for joining us on the All Out Leadership Podcast. We hope you gained new biblical insight that challenged you to grow in your leadership. If you've enjoyed this week's episode, we would love your help in getting the content out farther. You can help by subscribing to the podcast at ericlawson.com forward slash podcast and telling others about it. Next week, Pastor Eric will be back with another episode. So until then, we hope you have a great week being an All Out Leader.